I guess being an Olympic athlete, I always thought that I would inspire people if I won a medal. I was like, that's my main goal. If I win this medal, people will be inspired because I've, a, I've, a, I've come from nothing to something to now I'm the champion. And it's kind of funny how God has used me not winning an Olympic medal to inspire people. <laughs> he's, he's got a great sense of humor with that. <laughs> um, and um, I go to these interviews and I talk with people all the time and the, probably the number one question I get asked every day is, how do you try again? Like, how do you get the strength to try again? Like, when you hit that hurdle, and when you didn't win that race, or when you didn't get that medal, like, how did you pick yourself up again? And I firmly believe it's with the help of the Salvation Army. Because when we lost our house when I was growing up, we had nothing. I saw my mother just broken. She had five kids, no money, nowhere to go. She, she told me this, like, she, got, she packed us all in the car, gave us each a blanket, and she just drove around with no destination in mind. She had nowhere to go. And then that's when she reached out to the Salvation Army, and they allowed us to stay in the basement of the church until she was able to get her feet back on the ground. And so when people ask me, where do you get the strength to fight again? Where do you get your motivation? And I have to say, honestly, it's been instilled in me as a child from the core roots I learned at the Salvation Army. I mean, not only did they help us with the physical aspects of just the gentle push of giving us shelter and food, but the spiritual side of, okay, you're depressed. You have doubts, you have fears, you have concerns. Let's strengthen you on the inside so that you can fight to get back up. So what you guys are doing is not necessarily just with the, the physical, the, the money, the housing. You are helping change somebody's life to motivate them to get back on the right track. So I remember in, 08, uh, actually 04, that's age, you know, running too long. 04, I went to my first Olympic trials. I was so excited. Fresh out of college, I'd been winning all these races. Um, and I, you know, everybody's like, ah, she, she could potentially make this Olympic team. And I went there, and I remember seeing, like, you got, like, all these stars you grew up with, and seeing Gail Devers, she's the fastest American hurdler ever, and running next to them. And I, the first round I did good, I made it to the second round. And the second round, I didn't make it. I did not make the final. And that was the end of my Olympic dream. And I was devastated, I was crushed. Um, that's everything I had worked for. And I wanted to give up. Uh, you know, I was just like, I couldn't even be top eight in the US. How am I ever going to make an Olympic team? To make an Olympic team, you have to be top three in the world. Well, I think I was like 12th or 14th. I don't even know what I was. And I was just like, well, I tried. I gave it my best, uh, my best effort. And my coach and I had a talk. And he's like, no, oh, like, just because you are not where you need to be now doesn't determine your future. And I think that's for a lot of the instances people are going through when they're facing these storms. They think, man, I am, I'm down and out right now. Like, I am struggling with this addiction. I can't pay my bills. I have nowhere to go. It, it's going to be like this forever. It feels like it's going to be like this forever. I am not destined for greatness. And that's, it's hard to see past that when you're in the storm. And so when you have others who are providing a shelter during that time to help them overlook where they're at right now and, and give them hope and confidence of where they can be, it's a game changer. And I know it was for me. So what did I do? We picked ourselves up. I, I fought every year. So the first year out of college, I was getting fifth through eighth place in every race. A little bit better, at least it's not last. <laughs> then the next year, I was getting third through fifth. Then the third year, I was getting like top three. In 08, 2008 Olympics, right before Beijing, I was winning every race. I went to my, my second Olympic trials. I was determined to make that team. 
Not only did I make the team, I ran the fastest time that had ever been run at an Olympic trials, and it was easy. I, I, it was a completely different experience. I went from not even being in the final to now, here is Lolo Jones, she's the fastest American in the world, and she's going to the Olympics, and it's pretty much a guarantee that she'll win this Olympic gold medal. I was pumped. I was like, yes, I get to represent USA, this is amazing. So I went from not an Olympian to not only an Olympic athlete now, but the best in the world. And so when others have that downfall, when you can coach them, help them as you guys are doing, you're like, they could have these moments too where it's like, man, I went from being homeless to now I am paying my own bills. I have a steady job. Like I am making breakthroughs and breakthroughs in my life. So th this was amazing. I go there, I'm pumped, I'm excited, yes. First Olympic experience, everything's clicking right. We're, I mean, I'm, I'm setting PB after PB. I had the fastest race of my life, the, the second round, the night before the final. And I was just thrilled. And I remember praying to God and I, I was just, you know, so grateful for the opportunity to, to be there representing USA. And I remember this prayer so vividly. I said, God, I was just like, this is the biggest platform I'll ever have in my life. I said, let me use this platform to inspire people. Whatever the outcome, I, I never once prayed for a gold medal, not once, but I prayed that my race would inspire. And it's kind of like, I guess I was kind of tricking God because I was like, oh, well, if I pray to inspire, that means I win an Olympic medal, blah, 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 yeah. God knew what I was up to. <laughs> so go to the race and, you know, get in, you know, runners take your mark, you're nervous. I was nervous, but I was calm. It was almost as if I was in the eye of the storm. You know, I, I, I could see everything swirling around me. I could feel the energy. I could feel the pressure that I was the fastest run, runner for Team USA, and it was my job to bring back the gold medal. But at the same time, I had like just a sense of peace that I, I was going to execute and I was gonna do what I needed to do. And I, you know, runners take your mark, get in the blocks, you're ready, you're focused, you, you focus on your breathing, what you need to achieve. The gun goes off. And I remember I didn't have like the best of starts. Uh, you know, there was a the girl from Australia, she, she, she has a great start, but from the races in the, the, the year, I knew I'd like get her. And by the third hurdle, we were even. By the fifth hurdle, I was completely ahead of not her, but everyone. I knew I was winning that race. I'm at the Olympics winning the 100 meter hurdle race. By the seventh hurdle, they were, the hurdles were coming up so quick. And this, this happens quite a bit when you're running fast. And so I didn't want to get distracted and I kept saying like, stay focused, tighten up. I know that this seems like weird that I can think about all these things in a 12 second race, but I'm telling you it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm, I'm running, I'm, everything's you know, just working so smoothly. And then out of nowhere in my life, I've probably hit two hurdles in my whole, like practice races, I just don't really, I rarely hit hurdles. And when I hit that hurdle, I was shocked. I could not believe what happened. And um, I was just like, your automatic first thought is control the damage. And so I was like, just finish the race. I thought I still had a chance at an Olympic medal. And so I finished and I look up at, you know, the placings and I got seventh. I went from almost breaking the Olympic record to pretty much last. And I was just crushed and I like, I fell on the track and I was devastated. Uh, everything I had worked for, everything I had poured myself into was ripped away in one moment. Ripped away. And I, I just, I did not even have the strength to stand up. I felt like somebody had just literally ripped the insides from me and I, I could not even move. And I remember thinking, but you're here. You're on the track crying. And I, it's almost as if God was whispering to me, remember four years ago, you were sitting at home crying because you were watching the Olympics on TV, but now you're here. And so then it kind of like, from then I, I understood that God can make some amazing moments out of, one, of, out of our biggest pains. You know, my, my first pain was to not make the team. Boom, I make the team. Then the second pain was to not get an Olympic gold medal, but I was an Olympian. 
And I just didn't know like how I could continue. You know, I felt embarrassed and shamed. But then I thought about just like my upbringing and everything I'd been taught and that failure my mom had, I'm sure she was just as embarrassed to lose her house. And, you know, her friends and coworkers are asking her, well, where are you guys staying? Or, you know, like, how are you taking care of your family, you know? And how does it feel to have, you know, my dad was in and out of jail uh, and spousal abuse and alcoholism. And those are embarrassing life moments for anyone. And, you know, her embarrassment is, you know, just because she had it privately and mine was publicly, like seeing her go through that helped me have strength to go through what I went through. And she leaned on the Salvation Army. Every time she was broken, every time she had nowhere to go, every time she didn't have uh, food to feed us, we just relied on the Salvation Army. I can't tell you how many times we had to go and get cans of food because we had no, no money for groceries or how many Thanksgiving dinners I had at the church and Christmas presents I received because she couldn't even afford money to get me a Barbie. So heavily relied on them. Summer, we went to the summer um, day camp so that she wouldn't have to pay for a babysitter so that she could, you know, go work two jobs. Then to give her a break because she's a single parent with someone in prison, my dad in prison, she, they had, the Salvation Army had summer camps. So then she would get a break from us for at least two weeks. Praise Jesus, right? <laughs> so uh, there's so many uh, things that she was able to get assistance from just simply because people are donating, just simply because when people are Christmas shopping and they hear a little red bell ring, they're changing people's lives just by giving. It's so simple. And it's not only during the holidays. Year round, they helped us. And uh, as you were saying earlier, uh, it's just not a holiday thing. It's not a holiday spirit thing. You're changing lives every day, every moment. And you have no clue what these people can do. May, you know, maybe it's not the next Olympian, but maybe it's a doctor or a teacher or some some kid that you're helping achieve their dreams. You know, you got somebody singing in Astro games and Rockets and Texans. Oh, by the way, if I win an Olympic medal, you are singing when my flag is raised. <laughs> Amen on that. <laughs> so, um, and it was also really cute. His mom, he was so nervous about the, he's like, mom, which fork do I use for the salad? And it, <laughs> I was like, you use this one. I actually learned it in Sunbeam class. So I was like, a total flashback. Like, that was one of my badges, man. Like, let me help you out. <laughs> glad I passed. Yeah, so glad I passed. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so we, life has these up and down moments. No one can escape the hurdles of life. No one. They, they hit us all. And when we least expect into them in ways we, we don't want them to hit us. And, um... So after that, obviously, uh, I tried again for another Olympics, and this time everyone had me pegged out. I had spinal surgery a year before London Olympics. I was, it was the complete opposite of 2008. I wasn't the top runner anymore. I actually entered the Olympic trials as the second slowest athlete. And I remember reading the columns like, no chance, no chance, absolutely not, 100% not, Lola will not make this team. And I was like, well, it's a good thing I have faith because I'm going to go try. <laughs> and um, I get there, and I remember getting third in the first round of the Olympic trials. Well, you have to get third in the last round. So that means I had two more rounds to get through. And I, w I remember being so frustrated after that first round and like praying to God, like, I don't know how this is going to happen. I'm so frustrated, God, like, and I just gave it to him, and I got third in the second round, and then out of lane one, I got third and made the Olympic team. So I think once again, you know, I didn't win a medal, not Olympic champion, but I showed people that less than a year after having spinal surgery and not being able to run or walk, I made an Olympic team and I became one of the fastest Olympic athletes that year. So he continued to honor that prayer for me to be an inspiration, just not in the way I wanted it. 
And then finally, when I go to the London Olympics, I was like, this is it, God, this is all coming together. Yeah, okay, uh, it's like a fairy tale. I know you're gonna bless me with a medal. I didn't pray for it again, still not praying for it. But I, in my mind, I was like, he's gonna do it. I know, he's, we're cool now. I forgave you for 08, it's all good. Go there, get fourth place. I was, I didn't think I could get more crushed than 08. That one, that one took my heart. Cause I was like, man, God, we've been through this before. And you feel like you'd get stronger from it. But when it, you struggle with the same thing over and over again, and you're like, man, I thought I could get over this, but I can't. It's so, so devastating. It's not not achieving your dreams that hurts. It's getting close and then having it ripped away. You know, like, almost getting that job or almost getting out of debt and then boom, you're back in debt. And I think that that's what hurt the most. And it was the first time in my life that I didn't have the strength to run. I had no desire to compete. I didn't want to not be an athlete, but I had prayers where I was like, I have no strength right now. I don't have motivation. And then it was that moment that I'd remembered a conversation I had with an athlete a few years ago about being on the bobsled team. And so from there, that's when I, I went out there to get away from track and field. I was completely, you know, invited into this great situation and that gave me motivation. And so God used the failure of me not meddling at my second Olympics to become one of the few athletes to become a summer and winter Olympian. I mean, he does amazing things with our deepest hurts. And so I look at the people that, you know, are going to be helped through these gifts, through the mills. They're hurting. They are frustrated that they probably can't do this on their own. But you're helping them give them just enough light and hope to where they like, man, like I'm going to get through this and I'm, something amazing is going to happen from this. So here I stand, a three-time Olympic losing athlete. <laughs> but I'm proud to say that there have been some truly golden moments along the way. And I hope that everyone you guys help get to experience an amazing breakthrough from something that's so painful for them at this time. I just thank you guys for having me out here. And I hope you guys had a great lunch. And yeah, love to talk and meet with you guys. <laughs>